We continue with business recruitment selection and training, chapter 15. So we're going to on the job training. Because we have three types of training. We have induction, we talked about induction in the last class, which is training that you receive because you are newly employed. That is induction. Today we're going to on the job training. Why do we call it on the job training? We call it on the job training because this training occurs within the premises of the organization. So that means you are being trained within the premises of your company. That is on the job. Do we get on the job? Yes. Do we get on the job, please? Yes. So I, let me read anyway. On the job training. This is a form of training which occurs within the premises of the organization or the company. The, the trainers are likely to be existing employees with adequate skills. So you're going to be trained by existing employees. But these existing employees are those that have adequate skills and knowledge. They have experience in the job. So they are in best position to train you. That's why it is on the job. Do we get on the job here? So what are the ways to which on the job training can occur within the organization? The first one, learning from other workers. So when you are learning from other workers, it simply means you look, you're looking up to others. What they, whatever tasks they do, you repeat the same task until you get it better. Do you understand working with others here? You learn from them. They continue with that task. Because you're going to do that task, but because you're new, you still have, it's, there's a learning process for you. So in the course of them doing it, you continue to do it with them. So until you get better in it, then you, you can now stand independently. Do you understand the first one then? That's one way in which on-the-job training can occur within the organization. The second one, mentoring. For mentoring, that means you've been given certain individual with skills to give advice, to show you how things work within the organization. You are shadowing him or her. So because he or she knows more, then he offers or she offers you advice on what you have to do as an employee. Is it clear? Is mentoring clear, please? Yeah. The third one, job rotation. For job rotation, it simply means you are working within your different department at any point in time. That means, oh, you're going to spend maybe two weeks in one department, then you move to another department another week. So at the end of it all, you will now have, you, have, you become multi-skilled anyway, and you'll be able to perform the task that is, is being required of you. That is another type of on-the-job training. So you go through different departments within the organization to learn what they do there before you finally have your deployment. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? Yeah. Then we have the traditional apprenticeship. For traditional apprenticeship, it really happens mostly on uh, crafts, like diplomas, uh, the tailors, the barbers. You learn from them. So when you learn from them, they take you in, you learn through it, and as soon as you are able to, as soon as you become perfect, then you have a role to play in that company. I could choose to learn barber now, how to bar. So I have to be an apprentice. So I go to a barber shop, tell them I want to learn barber. So I learn through it. Then as soon as I'm able to, as soon as I become an expert, then I have a spot in that shop. Do you understand apprenticeship? Do we get it, please? No. It is you call it an apprentice because you have to come to you have to go through a learning process for crafts, mostly crafts like barbing, plumbing, technicians. So this job you need to learn them. They are semi-skilled. You need to learn them. And as soon as you are able to do it, then you can have a position or a task in that point. Like I just explained now, if I want to become a barber, then I have to learn barbing because I don't know how to barb right now. So I have to go to the barber shop talk to the, the owners of the shop that I want to become a barber, then they give me the opportunity. I learn through it. Then I am an apprentice at that point in time. But as soon as I, be, as soon as I know it well, then I can start barbing there. Do we get it now, please? Mm -hmm. Is it clear now? Yes. Then we have uh, the last one, GT, graduate training. For graduate training here, as soon as you, are gra as soon as you, you graduate from the school, from the university, the employers employ you, they put you through training, then they employ you. They get you in from, but most of the time they do this for those students that have uh, a better grades, better grades in the university, that have a better GP. The ones that are so brilliant in the university, companies go for them, they earn them. Do you understand the point here? So as soon, see something, put your hand up please. As soon as, because you have a better grade, you are attractive to employers. They employ you as a graduate trainee. So as soon as you are being trained, then they employ you. Maybe after a year through the training process, then they, they give you employment. But this one doesn't really happen to everyone. It happens to most uh, students that are really brilliant. 
Is it clear? Any question about method ways in which on the job training can occur? No. Now, go to the benefits or the advantages of on the job training. The first one, output is being produced. Because you are you learn. Because you're learning through it, you are at work and you're learning, it means you will still be producing. So output is produced. Do you understand the point here? It's not the same as off the job training, because if, if it is off the job training, it means you have to be trained from outside the organization. Then you won't be able to produce. Because if you have to produce, you have to produce within the organization. So on the job training allows you to produce. That's by being trained. Do we understand? Yes. This is an advantage. Or is it not an advantage? It's an advantage to the company because you're being paid at, and at the same time you are producing because you are present at one place. Clear? The second one, the training is relevant. Why is it relevant? It is relevant because you'll be trained on what you need to know. Do you get the point here? So if you are being trained within the premises of the organization, it means you'll be trained on what you need to know. So that means whatever training you have, it is relevant to your going forward. Do we understand? Are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay. The third one, cheaper than off the job training. Why is it cheaper than off the job training? It is cheaper than off the job training because for off the job training, you have to pay those companies that are going to train you. But for on the job training, is you are being trained by employees, which the company might not even pay. So that's why it's cheaper. Do we get it? And the last one, coordination doesn't take time. It's easy to coordinate. It's easy to coordinate. Why? Because it's within the premises of the organization. The employers, they know what to do. They don't have to, they don't have to consult anyone. They just arrange it and they will be able to organize it as soon as possible. Because it's within their organization. And like if it is off the job training, you need to book an appointment with the business because you are not the only one they train. They train other businesses too. They train other employees of other businesses. So you might they might not be able to give you the time you want. But if it is on the job training, because it's your premises, you can do whatever you want with your premises. Do we get it? Yes. Do you understand, please? Yes. Great. Then what are the setbacks? What are the problems? What are the drawbacks? What are the disadvantages of on the job training? The first one, output may be lost if workers make mistakes. Note, you are being trained. Yes, output is gained, the output is produced. But as soon as you make a mistake, because you are learning, it's a learning process. So it is expected that you make mistakes. So if you make mistake, whatever you produce cannot be sold. Whatever you produce cannot be sold. Yes or no? Yes. If you sell it to customer, that means you are selling a product that lacks quality. And when you sell a product that lacks quality, it means customers will not return. You're going to lose out on customers. Do you get the point here? Yes. So because you have made a mistake in the cost of producing that product, it has to be reworked. You have to start over again. And that is waste of resources. Do you understand the first point here? That's a setback. Isn't it a setback? Isn't it a setback? Yes. So, maybe stress. Maybe it's stressful. Maybe it's maybe stressful for some, some workers as they have to work with others. Some people do not like to train others. So I just want to focus on my job. I don't, I don't want interference. So those, that, those employees that do not like interference might, not find, might find it difficult to train workers. Do you get the point here? They just want to focus on their job. They don't want any attachment. So those group of employees would find it difficult to train workers. Do we understand? Yes. The third one, trainers may be frustrated if they are if they are paid. You know we said it's cheap, right? It's cheap, right? Yes or no? Yes. So because it's cheap, it might mean that your employers will not pay you for training that employee because they might consider it as part of your daily work. It's still within the work environment. It's still the working. It's still within the working hours. So we don't have, we don't have to pay. Then it would have meant that you are being seen as a cost to the organization. But if employers are seen as assets, they would even pay you for that extra. I'm thinking about staff as cost, staff as asset. Are you guys with me? Mm -hmm. Do we get the point here? So if I know that. I'm going to, if I know that as, uh, what, whoever I train, I'm not going to be paid for it. I might not want to train the person. I'm citing an example. I'll train anybody if I need to train. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. And the last one. Experienced workers may pass on bad habits to train it. You know, every individual has their own ways. They have their positive side and negative side. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. So, the individual, the trainer, might pass on a bad habit to the trainee. 
You know where training is, right? That individual you have been trained, that is being trained. The trainer is that individual that is training the trainee. Do you get the point here? No. No. There's a trainer and there's a trainee. A trainer is the person training the trainee. The trainee is that individual that is being trained. Huh. Do you get it now? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So, that trainer might pass up a bad habit to the trainee. Part of things he does or she does mm -hmm. that are not even ideal. But because he's been mentored, because he's mentoring or she's mentoring certain individual, he, might, he or she might pass that bad habit to that individual. Then you copy it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Any question about on the job, Kelly? No. Thank you.